My name is uh, Baltz Fry, and I'm the director of uh, the Linus Pauling Institute at Oregon State University in, in Corvallis, Oregon. I'm also a professor of biochemistry and biophysics. Yeah, there are a number of problems uh, and limitations with these uh, randomized control trials when they are applied to micronutrients. The first one is that uh, we often don't know what the dose response curve uh, looks like. So uh, you need to measure the micronutrient status of your subjects uh, at the baseline. Other otherwise, you don't know where you are on the dose response curve. For example, if you are at the saturating level of a micronutrient, like vitamin C in plasma is at saturation of about 70, 80 micromolar, and you give more vitamin C to such a person, you can't increase the levels anymore because you're already at saturation. So you wouldn't see an effect and you cannot expect an effect from uh, such a supplementation trial. So uh, dose response is a very important issue uh, for eligibility to these trials. You need to select uh, people with a low a baseline status so that when you give them the vitamin or the mineral you can actually see an improvement in that status otherwise you cannot uh, expect to see an effect like uh, a lower di disease risk for example. Uh, another big issue is that you never have a true placebo group in these randomized controlled trials of micronutrients because the group that gets the placebo already has certain baseline levels of that micronutrient and so uh, you're just comparing a lower concentration in your placebo group with a hopefully higher concentration in the troop that has been uh, treated with your micronutrient. But it's, it's just a gradual difference. It's not a all or nothing situation like you have with a pharmaceutical drug, like a statin. You either give it or you don't. Uh, micronutrients are essential nutrients, so you have them in your body whether or not you take a dietary supplement. Um, another important issue is, of course, that these primary prevention trials need to go on for a very long time. Uh, you need to have adequate micronutrient status for decades to prevent chronic disease, and it is very expensive to conduct these trials over such a long period of time. And then finally, another important limitation is what we call the healthy enrollee effect which means that people who are willing to uh, participate in these long-term trials are health conscious and usually much healthier um, than the average population. And so you start with a population that has a high micronutrient status, uh, which is a problem with respect to the dose response curve, and you have a population that has a lower disease incidence than the average population. And so you need a lot more um, cohorts or a lot more subjects in your cohort to accumulate uh, enough endpoints to see a significant effect. And these are limitations that really question the usefulness of the randomized uh, controlled trial design for the evaluation of uh, the biological or health effects of uh, micronutrients.